You have seen these pictures, I believe, of last Saturday's flooded roads. Water in drains and canals in the Queenstown, Bukit Timah and Ulu Pandan areas spilling onto the roads and pavements. And along Lower Delta Road, a branch fell onto a green car, smashing its windscreen. Well, speaking to the media yesterday during a visit to one of the sites for the Deep Tunnel Sewerage System, Minister for Sustainability and the Environment Grace Fu said the flash floods show the impact of climate change and the importance of planning ahead. She stressed that resources are being channeled into drainage improvement works. PUB has already spent about $2 billion on drainage system, improving it, widening it uh, to relieve floodings over the last uh, 10 years. And in the next five years, we will be investing close to $1.4 billion. Uh, in terms of the drainage projects, there are 37 current ones. There will be 10 more that will be added this year. So this shows our determination to improve our water infrastructure, increasing our climate resilience, and also making us uh, basically better, uh, more resilient in a climate-changing world, with sustainable development. Science and Environment correspondent Audrey Tan joins us now. Audrey, welcome back to the show. Let's recap something first. Uh, what is our current infrastructure to deal with flooding, with more rain expected for the rest of the month? Um, so it is National Water Agency, PUB, that's in charge of flood mitigation in Singapore. Mm -hmm. And they have a few strategies to try to reduce occurrence of flash floods in Singapore. And um, Okay, there is a three-pronged approach known as a source receptor pathway approach, which aims to reduce the amount of water that uh, that's discharged basically to the city area. So uh, when you talk about source approach, it will be having things like detention tanks or rain gardens, which will um, uh, reduce the amount of water uh, that is discharged into the drains in the first place. Secondly, would be the pathway, which is um, things that we can see like drains, rivers, canals, and according to the PUV website, we have over 8,000 kilometers of of such uh, drains here in Singapore now. And I think another thing that we are trying are forest pavements, where you have rainwater seeping through. So at least it reduces the amount of uh, water that gathers on our concrete structures. And lastly would be a receptor approach where you reduce the occurrence of um, flooding happening near buildings. So for instance, you know, in the MRT stations, if you have to go up a flight of stairs before you go down into the escalator, that is known as a receptor approach because it reduces flood waters from entering on its key infrastructure. So these are some of the strategies that PUB has been trying uh, over the years. And uh, we, we can see this in our daily lives and all these are meant to help reduce our occurrence of flash floods in Singapore. Right. Well, um, Minister for Sustainability and the Environment, Grace Fu, you know, she said that the flash floods show the impact of climate change. So Audrey, do you think the current strategies, as you mentioned, can properly mitigate future flood risks considering our ongoing battle against climate change? Yeah, climate change is a big thing um, because with climate change, I mean, as Minister mentioned, we're going to experience bouts of heavier rainfall and also periods of drier than usual weather. And on top of that, um, we also have Another challenge with this urbanization, I mean, you can see this, right? If you pour a cup of water on, a, on, your, on the floor at your house, versus you pour a cup of water on a, a patch of forest or uh, even a flower pot, you can see that nature has the capability to absorb the water through, which is something that concrete structures do not have. So if climate change and urbanization, I mean, these are just some of the factors that is going to increase the chances of flash flooding in Singapore. And uh, of course, despite all the source pathway receptor approach that PUB has, we have to think that, you know, Singapore is land scarce and there is going to be a limit about how much our drains can be widened. Um, even when you talk about underground uh, space, I mean, we have MRT tunnels there, we have, uh, we, we have the deep tunnels, sewer rich system there. So there is going to be limits into how much we can, how many more drains we can build or how much more our drains can be widened. Of course, we will all hope for the chance of there, there not being any flash floods uh, in, the years, in the years ahead. But I think that one thing that we have to consider is um, more innovative kind of engineering strategies, whether like the forest pavements or uh, even things like, you know, in Bishan Ang Mokyo Park, you have the, the, the naturalized river that can swell and accommodate more water during periods of rain and during uh, drier periods, you have the space used for something else. 
Um, but I think this really depends on the topography of the area and it's something we need to explore. Whether or not our current strat strategies will be enough to prevent flash floods in the future, I think it's still too soon to say. It also depends a lot about uh, the global climate change efforts and uh, let, we, we just have to wait and see and wait for engineering to catch up. Right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Audrey. We've been speaking with science and environment correspondent for The Straits Times, Audrey Tan.